Shut up and sit down. Hello again. <clears throat> All right. Got some bits and pieces on the go. Let's have a little shift in the mound. Blake in the bassaroonie. Uh, let's see what's going on with her. Uh, I'll just run over my bus conductor, Burke. Right, <coughs> as you can see, roof is on. Uh, I've hidden all the wires rather successfully. I've put the dash bars on. They're not sticking too great at the moment, so I'm going to have a, a little look at that. <coughs> the wires there with the bulb on that's for the audio i just have the bulb on there to make sure it's getting power and then we've got mud flaps things going on underneath a bit of texture to the switches to try and lose them and then i've got to weather the underneath but i'm holding off of that purely and simply until i get the audio sorted i've had a couple of goes at it and it's been a bit of a dog so uh, i'm gonna do it on an, on my macbook and uh, usb on there but what else have we been up to a few decals have gone on uh, some of the handles and i'll get my pointy stick sorted in a bit to go through that but uh, that's the bus. Actually, I'm going to glue that whilst I think of it because it's getting to uh, become a bit of a butt ache. So I'll just uh, put like a dubious bit of extra thing in there. Just to see if we can get that to take. So that's the bus side of things we've also got uh, I've got room yeah I'll just put that at the back also started on the diorama usual picture frame with a riser in it all the way across and then I load in there Offcuts of polystyrene, etc., to get the bus on, and then I'm going to have this little cubby hole here as a lift out section that all the power pack is going to sit into. So, we've got a few bits on the go. But what I've been up to whilst that's all settled in its sort of thing is trying to. Rest that on there's trying to sort out the last of my figures, which is this little bloke. I'm just going to zoom in on him. Come on, let's uh, get something for the camera to zoom in on. There you go, here's this little fella. See? My little bus conductor. I'll zoom out. Won't be tape under there. Brilliant thing for the camera to zoom in. Here's this little geezer. Now, he was a standard uh, stood up passenger with both arms as they appear there. A uh, little bit of a trick uh, with the old Zippo lighter warm up his elbow, bend his arm up, a little bit of filler in there just to regain the sleeve, a little bit of styrene off cut and cut a, a little shape out to replicate the money pouch that the bus conductors all carried and this little strap is made out of Tamiya tape little fin, peel it off, fold it in half, stick it on itself 
glue it there, fella, and paint it. There. Painting's not great at the moment, purely and simply because I'm making or scratch building the next uh, little piece for him. And all bus conductors used to carry a little ticket machine uh, on their chest or on their stomach, should we say. So mine's made out of, believe it or not, a good old fashioned plastic drinking straw. Little bit of styrene and the uh, internal copper wire. And I've come up with that, which is a little tiny ticket machine. It's really tiny, as you can see. And all that's going to need now is a little bit of primer, a bit of silver paint. It's got the winding handle on here. And then that's going to sit around about there like so once it's painted and then I make some straps for it so that's what we're currently doing we're working on in so I'll grab myself a little bit of silver paint because I can give that uh, ticket machine a little bit of a, a once over Excuse my grip, there we go. That's why I always have millions of pairs of tweezers everywhere because I am absolutely useless at gripping stuff. Knackered old brush is what I use just for this because it's only going to be its first coat. I just want to get rid of a drinking straw effect and let you guys actually see. we've got and it is absolutely tiny but it's going to look really really quite effective once it's on his on his uh, person so Tamiya paints ain't the easiest of uh, paints to brush paint with but I'm willing to give anything a go, mate. You know, it's purely and simply to give the illusion of the ticket machine. A little chrome handle. But, uh, you know, a little 10 minute scratch build. That's something that didn't exist, now exists. He can go about and do his job. You can buy your bus tickets. Everyone's a winner. Right. So that's its first coat of paint. And already, it's looking quite effective. Yep. Good. Happy days. That's one happy Uncle Fester. I'll get me old sludgy pot of uh, X20A on the go. Give me brush a quick, quick clean. Wipe it off with a cloth. Ta da! Ready to go again. So that's a ticket machine that can dry. We'll leave that there. Let's find what colour I used for the conductor geezer. Just paint the elbow of his whistle with a base coat of blue. Don't matter whether it matches, I just want to lose the white at the moment. Just so that I can see where he might need a little bit more work. And then I've sanded along the edges of any seams on his trousers. 
So I'm just going over it, not too uh, expertly at the moment. I'm just slapping the paint on. Slap it on. And that will give me an idea of how the conductor is going to start looking as I go further forward with him because he's quite a prominent figure on the back of the bus so I'm going to stand him on the platform so he's pretty pretty much going to be seen by anyone and everyone that first looks at the bus they're all going to say oh look you've got a bus conductor on you and if I had done him as the original fella in a light blue suit with uh, you know, his hands in his pockets or whatever, they would have thought, well, nine times out of ten people are going to go, where's his ticket machine? Or, you know, where's this, where's that? You know, you, there are in the model community what we call rivet counters, and they're people that have got nothing better to do than say, oh, there's a bit of 36 rivets on that panel. So, yeah. Each to their own, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not a rivet count, and never have been, never will be, don't particularly want to be. Uh, okay, just had a quick lick of paint on his whistle, just to neaten it up a small amount. Nowhere near the final coat that he's going to have by a long shot, but I just want to start... Oh, there's a cruddy old lid on there. I just want to start dressing him up a tad because like I say he's going on the uh, rear platform of the bus so I want that to look right um, I've had a change of plan <laughs> me and my change of plans eh? with the audio I faffed around with the motherboard on it because I wanted originally to run it off the power pack uh, that's powering the rest of the bus um, so I thought oh yeah chop it all the bits and sold the bits on it and add bits and, and all of that and I was going to do away with these batteries I put jumper wires in there and that and the more I thought about it the more I thought do you know something it's three bloody batteries so I'm going to make a tray for that to sit in that will sit under the bus so you'll have the speaker ridden by this box that will sit underneath the floor and then this motherboard's going to slide out so you'll have a, a sliding piece and it will slide out the whole shebang I'll change the battery, slide it all back in and, and the bus is live again uh, I think that will work a bit better I could be wrong you know, I could be right, I don't know I just need to think about it that's why I've not put the audio in there yet because that's been underneath the back of the bus mounted and taken off and mounted and quite a few times now and each time I've not really been that happy with it so I'm definitely leaning towards making a single styrene piece that this is all uh, fixed to um, the power lead or the switch to activate is going to go on here I'm just going to drill a tiny hole, solder it through on itself uh, when you flick the switch it's basically doing the same as when you open the greeting card it's touching this piece of metal onto the one below and it'll play the audio um, power wise, I, I really don't know I, wanted, I desperately want to do away with these batteries so I don't have to tamper with it but I've tried a couple of times and each time it's I don't know, it's not... I don't want to overcook the board, basically. So, a little bit more research is needed. But, in my brain, it's telling me just to have this on a sliding piece of styrene. Like a drawer, and you just open it. Do what you got to do, slide it shut. And I can blend it in with a bit of uh, filler, a bit of fake bodywork. Um, so, it would basically be a box like so with edges all around it on three sides and then on this side you just flick your finger on and basically the styrene's going to slide out 
and underneath it is the motherboard, change the batteries and you just slide it back in and the weight of it will hold it in place underneath the bus. That's my theory, hence why I've not done too much more in that area. It's frustrating because I, I want to get on and uh, get it built, but having put so much time and effort into it, it would be a crying shame if at this stage I rush it. So I'm kind of just biding me time. Just make sure that I do it right. Uh, because, you know, it'd be a shame just for the sake of speeding things up if I if I went ahead and done all of that and uh, made a pig's ear of it. So, let him dry. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll go into how I'll make the straps and piece them together and, and do a bit of detail work on him and then we can put him in place it's then gonna clear coat the windows uh, and start putting them on uh, I'm gonna brush coat the, the gloss varnish on the bus At least that way I can control that I don't get any on the windows themselves because I don't want the windows to fog up. Uh, I want to put a little bit of weathering on the windscreen as well so it looks like the white was a, a bit working and moving dirt around. So I'll show you a little trick I use on that, how to get the effect of curved wiper blades going across a windscreen. I tend to use a coin, a bit of Tamiya tape, and I, I put it on the glass, on, on, on the surface of the rubber mat. I draw around the glass, the clear part, and move it out of the way. And then I get my coin, draw the shape out, and then I'll peel that off and then place it on the... Uh, piece and then I go over it with a bit of Tamiya smoke or even a bit of uh, thinned down engine grime from a weathering set and pop a bit of that through the airbrush and just give it a quick over the window and let it dry and then when you peel off the tape you have a perfectly clear arc where the uh, wiper blade's been doing its job so for those of you that haven't done that, it might be a little tip that you might find useful if you're doing cars, buses, planes, anything like that, where you want the illusion of windows that might have been wiped by hand. I'll probably do it on a few of the bus windows as well, where the passengers have put fingerprints on it, and I might try and replicate a bit of that uh, to give you guys a bit of a bit of an idea on what you can do, just uh, rather than have perfectly clear glass. Not been funny. Have you ever got on a, a bus and seen a perfectly clean window? I know I haven't. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, come back in a second when he's dry uh, and we'll start the next stage of uh, manoeuvres with uh, building our little bus conductor fella. I'm going to give his face a bit of detail as well because, you know, it's a man with no eyes. Uh, we'll, we'll dress him up, sex him up a little bit, uh, make him uh, pretty much useful. So we'll leave it there for bloke off then. Uh, got the straps to make for his little ticket machine. Which, as you can see, is tiny. So we'll get that into place. Just do a little zoom for you, just so that you can uh, catch up with what I'm doing. There you go. You see him all right? Yeah. 
Right, so the straps on this used to cross over the back of the person, like so. So what I'm gonna do is I initially come around. I'll stick that round about there, loose that, and then you come over the back under his arm to about there. I'm just gonna peel that off. so and then we start the folding process of the strap and it is literally just fold the tape in off down its entire length like so strap number one so I might as well make the second one now that I've got that one done so let's just get rid of all the crud off my bench note to self I must clean my bench more often because it's a slough bit round about there shove that there just so that the camera's got something solid to focus on Exactly the same. Yeah, like that. A little gentle fold. All the way along. Now, I'm not worried whether there's any creases in it because, you know, the straps were leather. So, they, you know, they creased, they aged. So, I don't, don't fret as to whether or not it's perfectly smooth and perfectly uh, in line because at the end of the day you are only simulating stuff so that's the two straps made and then they are going to feed around the torso and under his arms so they are a bit fiddly so I think I'm going to go through that way first with that one. Okay. Come through just a tad. I'll oh, book. Like that. Like that. Up a Rooney. And like that. So it's a bit long, but I don't mind that. Because I'm literally figuring out where the ticket machine is. I don't want to see no straps, so I'm just going to get me little tweezers and give that a tug. Give that a dab with a bit of extra fin, just to keep that in place. That looks a little bit messy at this stage, what you're doing with the figure. But bear with it, because you know, it, it will come good. I can assure you. Don't help that I've uh, stuck a bit of paint on there, but fret not. want it to bite into place just like that and then we come up and over the shoulder and then around like so so I've now got an idea where the strap's going so I'll just slap on a bit of extra thin slap it on and place that roughly where I want it to be. I want to come round I'm just out, out of shot again, I do apologise. So come up around the shoulder and then we 
coming down so if I put the actual glue on the tape uh, get a cotton bud or a q-chip for my American friends just gently persuade the strap to comply to where you want it to be and I want it to almost land so it's over one let's grab my machine and it looks like it's then clipped to the top of the ticket machine so I'm happy now with that so let's get my my scissors and trim that to size like so I'm going to glue that down actually with a bit of the super sticky because that's not doing what I want it to do so just need to clutter my desk a little bit Uniform is getting another coat anyway, so I'm not too fast. About that. Just come over a tad Rooney. Shut my machine on just to see what that's looking like. So at least straight away you can see what's happening. That little strap there clips to the side, that strap there clips to the top, and it goes over the driver's torso, like so. I've just got the same to do the other side now. So I love doing stuff like this. I think I'll I think I'll need to go and get a life. Don't quite go up under your arm, so you're going to have a slight adjustment under there. I've just made that seam under his arm bit a little bit. Uh, too tight. So I just want to give you a trim. Just so that that strap sits a little bit better up under his armpit. Just like that. comes up over so let's give that a dab the super strong now don't stick me fun Place just for a minute, I think. It's a bit of a tricky stage, this one, because I'm not the best with grip at the best of times. So I want that to sit almost like so. so. A bit heavy handed with the glue, slap it on. Slap it on. Right round. Like so. Grab the scissors. Lose that bit. Okay. 
it will look okay on this. And then come over the shoulder. Let's move my scissors. So now it looks a bit, a bit of a two and eight at the moment, but it is in place. This is the horrible smelly stage, but it's all done to create an illusion. Lot of extra thin round there because I want it to soak under the tape. And just then go around every single edge with the extra thin so that it gets underneath. And again, yeah, I know paint's going everywhere, but this has all got to be repainted yet. Yeah? Glue that I've got on there at the moment is literally only a base. He's now got all these straps made. Shoulder straps, they'll be painted brown. Well, actually, I'm going to paint them black just to give them a distinction between. The money power to be a brown leather. I think I'll do the straps for the ticket machine black. I think they were, if I remember rightly, anyway. I think they was a material uh, strap on them rather than being a leather esque strap like the money pouch. I'm pretty sure that the ticket machines used back then had a woven uh, material strap, a bit like an army belt. You know, that sort of uh, woven banding uh, with a couple of chrome clips on the end. Just shove my scissors out of the way. So that's the straps made. Uh, really, the tape just doesn't want to sit right. So you're going to get a real heavy handed approach with the glue now. Just hold him in place. But little things like this can can have an effect on a model. Just gives it a little bit more detail. Just that little extra 10, 10 minutes spent doing this can really add a bit of life to a kit. You know, and I think it's worth doing, to be honest with you. A lot of people don't. I do. I you know, think little things like this just just add to your overall overall effect. Let's see how they sit. If they don't play nice, I might have to put a bit of uh, super glue in there just to hold them down. hum nicely to myself I hope uh, all of you are doing okay out there you're all building your kits as you should that they're all coming along nicely there are a, a few of you that have been in touch that are doing buses which is nice been able to help a couple of people out with some bits and pieces which you know makes my beginner efforts worthwhile you know I'm not the best wouldn't pretend to be but 
you know, I get by. I like the kits. I like how they turn out. Uh, people that see them are often uh, pretty impressed as well. So for me, you know, that's that's what I I do this for. <sighs> You know, it's a great pastime, it's a great hobby, and a great way of learning, good good way of meeting people as well, you know, there's a lot of modelers out there, a lot of people out, out there just learning the hobby, perhaps haven't built anything before, not sure uh, what to do, and they hear all the different um, terminologies that we use, and are probably a bit sort of stumped by it all. So, uh, yeah, if we can help anyone out there, that's that's what we want to do. Because it's a great hobby. You know, you're creating art at the end of the day. You know, miniature worlds, little miniature art. Kind of sounded like Bob Ross then. Um, so, yeah, enjoy it. You know, the, like anything, you know, if you're doing a kit and you come across something, and no matter how hard you try, you just cannot achieve what you want to achieve, then put it down, walk away from it for a, a few days, you know, refresh and recharge your batteries, and then come back to it, you know, and, and break it down into more manageable, manageable sections, you know, if you sat out there for five hours solid, you're going to get tired, you're going to get fatigued, you're going to, you know, struggle a bit so you know give give your your, your brain a breather uh, you know and come come back to the kit at a later time and then all of a sudden you'll find ah that went together a lot a lot easier than i thought it would and uh you're back back on board so i'm gonna let him dry at that stage just want them straps to, to sit down a bit and stay sat down and then we can come on to the uh, painting of the straps and the figure and and, and, that, and, and dropping his little ticket machine in but that's kind of the result we're going to have so it just looks like it's 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 on his person it is attached it's where it should be I'll just put me a uh, little clamp on his toes so that he stands up. Let him dry. Uh, I need that now. And then we can uh, move on to giving him a little paint. So it's dry now. <coughs> so we can get on and do a bit of painting. So first things first, a little bit of uh, rubber black X85. And we can start getting these straps painted. Give them a little lick along the side there. Not worried about going over the edges at this stage because I'm going to come back in and cut him with the blue anyway. Just that little contrast. Is all that's needed. I'll just move the uh, little ticket machine out of the way so that I'm on, on shot here. Apologies if my eyes are creeped into shot. My eyesight is pretty bad. So, uh, 
I wear a magnifying visor when I paint. Uh, one of those bad boys just lets me see what I'm doing. And yes, this is my own little custom paint job. But if ever you see that pop in the shop, that's because I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Just in case you wonder what it is that suddenly popped in, it's, it's my visor that I wear for uh, close-up work. And again, this is only the first coat. That's the visor knocking the camera, apologies. This is only the first coat on these straps. <clears throat> this is just to get the initial effect that I'm looking for uh, on the straps. Just come round. So, come under his arm on that strap. Just make sure I'm capturing everything. So that's still uh, a bit damp. I'm just going to go around again because it's got his first coat on. And next, just gives the straps a little bit of texture, that's the word. Because where the bottom layer is quite dry, it can, where your brush is dragging, give the effect of woven material. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's worth just popping on that second coat whilst the first is dry. Not bad. Not bad. I'll live with that. Give the brush a clean. <sighs> so I think I'm done with that just for a minute. on it this little light goes underneath the front of the bus I might as well give it a quick quick coat of that whilst I can see that it's there This has got to be attached when I wear at the bottom of the bus anyway. So I might as well get that a quick, quick lick of paint. And the same with a wiper blade, very tiny little wiper blade. But again, quick 
会更有可能。哎So now we're done with the rubber black. Shoved it out of the way. Give the brush a clean. Come on to a bit of X9 brown. And this is just to recapture the uh, edges of the brown strap. Up under there. So I'm going to do this close up and then I'll bring it back into shot. Same again with the front strap. I'll just try and get an angle on there where I can actually see it. Not too worried about getting it on his tie at the moment. He's out as well. So that just gives a contrast there of the fact that one set of straps is over the other. Oh, no. It's actually coming up quite well, this little fella. the brown done with. And then I'm going to do his uniform in a bit of royal blue. Um, because I've got a base colour of normal blue down there. What I can now do with the royal blue is just highlight areas to try to give that illusion of folded material so i'm just gonna clamp these boots so that i don't burn it i'm just gonna again do this out of shot in a couple of places just so that i can see what i'm actually doing Again, I'm not going particularly thick, I'm just dusting over it to give some areas of contrast. I tend to find with this paint less is more. Probably go over it with a, a little wash anyway. Just put a bit of light and dark texture in some places. <laughs> it's just beginning to start taking shape. Back. I'll 
we ever say then that this little fella is done. Just make sure that I'm catching all the little scabby bits that I can see at this stage. Purely and simply because once he's in place I ain't gonna be able to get them. really dry well before I then go in and do it sure. Pretty much as far as I really want to go on it. So, there is the bus conductor. With his straps all done. A little bit of contrast on his trouser leg. I can see it here. Once I say, once it's matted down, it's just going to look like the material's creased and in use. So I put my lid on the paint because I'm notoriously bad at spilling stuff. ticket machine and that will be ready to put in place once the paint's dried on the uh, little chap on the bus conductor take the visor off uh, I'm gonna let him dry um, about 20 minutes or so and then I'll come back, I'll fix the ticket machine in place uh, and then touch up his shirt and then do his hands face and a little bit more detail on it and then give him a quick wash and uh, it'll be ready to go give him a matte coat and uh, we'll be able to say that the bus conductor is finished. So I'm going to let him dry and then we'll come back and we'll attach the ticket machine and then uh, put him in place on the bus. Uh, and we'll go from there. <laughs> 